Good evening and welcome to Meal Prep Sundays with the DFAM. Today we have a very special guest. Welcome, Dr. Diana Bittner. Thank you so Yay, much for joining for, us. This is awesome. I love how you guys are doing this. It's so helpful for everyone to have these ideas. Uh, these recipes are off the hook. So if you are just joining us and you don't have the recipes yet, uh, we'll put a link actually right here. You can get the recipes right here. Today we are making kale and quinoa salad and also classic tomato soup. We're gonna throw in some lean proteins to have those locked and loaded and ready to go for the week at the end. And of course, fresh cut veggies uh, for all your meals and snacks throughout the, the next couple of days. And then I wanted to explain what we are doing. So Dr. Bittner, if you had that one thing that you need to do, go ahead. I'll open up everything and, uh, and give you an update on our financial goals. And then when Dr. Bittner comes back, I will give her a full introduction. So- A proper introduction. A proper introduction. So my name is Margo, I'm the mom. I'm Steve the dad of the D fam and our family, the Drake family, AKA the D fam that is making noise. And Teddy is calling us. So I'm wondering if we are having issues um, and decline Steve. Okay. I have lost all everything. So I don't even know if we are live anymore. Okay, I see my camera still going and Steve walked away. I am wondering if we are having mic problems. Um, let me grab, uh, let me grab my phone and make sure we are streaming live into the right place. And if I see that we are going, even though I can't see anything, uh, it looks like we are, okay. It looks like we are live and I can hear on Facebook and we are in the right place, at least on Facebook. So I'm gonna move forward. So um, it would be really helpful if I could see. Uh, oh, 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 there we go. Okay, nothing like a rough start. All right, so tonight we have fabulous recipes for you. If you would like the recipes, text FAMILY to 344-4401 or go to www.dfam.life. Uh, our family, the Drake family, AKA D fam, all came together to uplift other families. So that's what we're doing. And we started with meal prep because everybody eats. And when you are prepared for the week, not only is life around your house a lot calmer, but it is way better for your health and way better for your, uh, your body and your bank account for so many different reasons. Not that we don't dine out, we love to dine out. It's just that we have a plan and we're sticking to the plan. Each one of us has created a financial goal and we are staying accountable by keeping you updated uh, every week with our financial, how we are doing uh, toward our financial goal. So I want to uh, let you know that Stevie is in the lead with 6% to goal. Uh, Teddy is 2% to goal. Steve and I are 0.995 something. I'll tell you exactly when I when I pull up the number um, to goal. And Ellie is in the hospitality industry and her income has been impacted. So she is 0% to goal right now. Each one of us has a different dollar amount and a different due date. Um, but we are all working diligently toward it, and the meal prep is part of that. So, um, did you want to say anything before we get started? No, I want to cook. All right, let's these, go. These recipes are so good. Um, and when um, Diana gets back, I want to ask her about the soup. I don't. I'm sorry, I'm coming. Because it's it's really really good. She had she's got something on the grill, so she had to step out. And, there she it is. is. Okay, Dr. It's just longer than I thought. I was making uh, chicken for the week, so I was grilling some for my son, and then for the week, it right. took a little longer. But now it's off the grill. It smells so good. There's nothing like grilling out in the cold. <laughs> well, hey, whatever it takes to have those things prepped and ready to go to make your life a lot easier. Oh, well, it makes so, it so much easier. In fact, I I'm making double quinoa tonight because then I'll have it for the week. Nice. That's exactly what we're doing also. So um, just to give Dr. Bittner a proper introduction, 
Dr. Diana Bittner is the co-founder and chief medical officer of True Women's Health. Steve, can you put the True Women's Health uh, ticker up? Yep. And uh, we are going to give you the information on how to contact True Women's Health. Uh, she is um, a mother of three, and I was thinking the other day, Diana, when I was looking at our picture together, for the job that you have had for almost 30 years, uh, being a board-certified OBGYN with those crazy hours, not getting, you know, your sleep being impacted all the time, you and having three kids and everything that you've done, uh, with your career, you are in incredible shape. Thank you. It's, it's, it's a challenge. And, and certainly I've had lots of help with family and friends helping out with the kids over the years. But when I was about 40, I found a book that changed how I think about things. I think you and I have talked about this. It's called Body for Life for Women. And Dr. Peek, what she taught me is that I didn't have to do everything every day in terms of exercise, but I had to do something every day. So I really incorporated that for the I'm 54 the past 14 years. And now, you know, as the kids got older, I would work out more and uh, we've always eaten really healthy. Um, I, I was telling my daughter Pixie now is 22. She has her first job and she was laughing and she's saying, I don't know how you did it. You know, I'm four hours of sleep and, and you know, we always, and she said, we always had like home cooked meals every night. And what I would do is on Sunday night, I would make dinner for Sunday, Monday. And on Tuesday, I would make dinner for Tuesday, Wednesday. And then Wednesday, I'd be on a call all night. So then I'd have Thursday, I'd make dinner for Thursday, Friday. So we always had fresh meals. And um, Aunt Norma would always have it heated up when I got home. And the kids would be eating my food, which was really important to me. Oh. It was a standard. What a great story. And great this story. food. So, uh Diana contacted me. She was making this wonderful meal for one of her friends that oh, that's right. was out of town. And then that friend had a sick family member. So she had to fly out and she had all this wonderful food. And she thought I would enjoy it. So she asked me over and it was so good. And food is always so much better when you don't make it. And it's homemade. It and it's I think that is so good. And what a perfect guest spot to have you, a medical doctor, an expert in female health, a mother of three, uh, an entrepreneur who's just launching her dream to be our first guest. Um, Thank you so much. I'm honored. But, you know, Margo, we really, we got to know each other a bit that night. It was the first night we really talked and hearing about how you've done food prep for sports teams, how you were you know, on Wood TV doing, you know, healthy eating and food prep for so many years. This has been your passion. And you and Steve have been, you know, ultra athletes forever. I'm just thoroughly impressed with how you've, like, again, the same thing that I'm doing. You're taking all of the things that you love and you're doing, you're turning it into not only your lifestyle, but your business. And I'm just, I couldn't be more impressed. Well, um, when you are... What is the quote? When you're doing what you love to do, you never work a day in your life. I love that. And you figure out how, what you love to do and then how to get paid to do it. So exactly, which is exactly what we're doing. So Steve is getting started on the uh, soup. So you want to tell what you're doing? So the soup has very few ingredients and that's a sign of a really, really good recipe. Um, right now what I'm doing, I've already Part of one of the longest things that we have to do is um, roast tomatoes. So I took about eight Roma tomatoes, sliced them up in the oven, and roast them already. So that part's already done. Um, Steve, can I interrupt a little bit? A second. What's that? Can I interrupt a second? Yes. So one trick of this is is you know the tomato. I don't know if you did this, took the seeds out, but I always get a melon baller, and I scoop out the seeds of the tomato and then put it on the cookie sheet. So Easy. I'm not cooking it with all the seeds. Oh good. With the Romas, maybe it's not so much of a big deal. Yeah. We use Romas and didn't end up. Yeah, we use part. Romas. They just don't have any seeds really in the in the they're just meteor. That's perfect. But that's a great tip and that's why it's so important to tune into the broadcast because you get so many tips and stories that help you in the kitchen in the future. So do you use a silpat or do you use tin foil? 
Um, tin foil, then the mess up, is, the cleanup isn't so bad. And I think the key to the tomatoes roasting really well is that low temperature, you know, yeah. 300 degrees for an hour. That's really yeah. cool that is that long and that slow. So when, that we, low. when we did it in our test kitchen, uh, yeah. I, I broiled them. So that was hotter and it just is going to taste different. I think there's a lot more juice involved with cooking it slower for a longer amount of time. So the next, thing, the next thing that goes in this is a yellow onion. So I've cut those already. And we're going to throw those in the pot and just saute those right in the soup pot. Um, and then what are the in other ingredients? Uh, salt and pepper, um, tomato paste. Hold on. You yep. saw tomatoes, extra virgin olive oil, salt and pepper, yellow. And then, yellow, oh, I'm sorry. You saute the, the onions in the... Um, a little bit of olive oil with the t and then you throw in the tomato paste at the very end when the onions are translucent. That's it. You tomato or well, there's, there's a little paste. bit of veggie or chicken broth, but then I think the brilliant is the the red northern or the northern beans that you put in. Right. So that's how you get rid of the cream, right? And again, I do want to give credit. Um, this recipe I modified from a cookbook that I love. I was frantically looking for it before we went live. Oh, well, I couldn't find it, but it's called Love Real Food by Katherine Taylor of Cookies and Kate. So I do want to give her credit for this Northern bean idea. Okay. It really helps get the fat out of the recipe because so many roasted tomato soups or you buy the canned roasted tomato soup or even like Amy's tomato bisque, which I love, it's got cream in it. And dairy doesn't agree with me so well. Plus I really want to get out that saturated fat. So these northern beans are just such a trick to have them substitute the, for the cream and still make it thick and creamy. And I think Sonia has a um, question, why take out the seeds? Yes. In all honesty, Sonia, I have no idea. It was in the recipe and it made sense to me. I don't know if it makes them more bitter. I'll, we'll get back to you on that one. I, do, I don't know. I could make something up, but I, I have no idea. All right, and, these are going in the pot. And Alyn is saying hi, ladies, and Steve. So we can say hi to Alyn. Hi, Alyn. So I'll look it up. In fact, we can ask Anna, our uh, nutrition um, coach at True. I'm sure Anna will know. And so we are talking. So this is what they are making right now, the classic tomato soup. And I am moving on to – I'll get – while that is doing its thing, I am going to start on the kale and quinoa salad. So, um, and Diana and I are making this the same recipe two different ways. I'm going to be using an Instapot. She does it on the range. So Correct. I'm going to show you the Instapot, and then when she gets to this point, she can show you how she does it on the range. But this is all I do. I doubled the recipe. I think Diana did also, so she has salad for a full week, but this is um, one cup of quinoa and then at the appropriate amount of water that I that is for the Instapot, which is different than what you see in the recipe doing it on the stovetop. So the thing that I love about the Instapot is that you throw in the quinoa, you throw in the water. It doesn't get soggy, Margo. Say that again. It doesn't get soggy. No, it's perfect. Sweet. Throw in the uh, dried cranberries, which we're going to talk about those in a minute. Uh, and you put the lid on. And you hit rice. That's it. And you don't have to look at it. You don't have to think about it. It's safe. How long does it take? Uh, it takes about 15 minutes. It it deals with pressure, so it's it's pressure cooking. I wonder if you put the dried um, berries in with it now that they would get extra poofy. Um, I, that's the way I did it. I did it both ways in the test kitchen. I did it on the range, which I didn't. I don't think I did it right. I didn't. It didn't look as good as when I did it in the instant pot, but it was also. Thanksgiving, there was a lot going on here, and I probably missed a step. There. Oh, so there was a lot happening in in our test test kitchen that day. 
I so bet. that's it. And then you just hit it and you don't have to worry about anything overflowing or burning. You don't have to think about it anymore. So Steve, do you want to give us an update on the soup? Or Diana, you want to give us an update on soup while I get the ingredients? Yeah, ready? so I got my onions are done. I've already put the tomato paste in. I use this tomato paste that's in the tube. It's oh, awesome. I love that. It stay, it keeps really well, yeah. Uh, oh, good. Well, I had some leftover from last time I opened a big can, so I just threw it in a little baggie and I froze it. So it just thawed okay. out. But well, yes, you know so what I love like is that. when the onions are hot and you put the tomato paste in the onions and I love how it starts to get real thickened, you know, before you put the rest of the stuff in. So it's when fun. you freeze your tomato paste, do you freeze it in tablespoon size sections or do you just freeze it all together? It's probably two tablespoons, but I'm kind of a gestalt cook unless, you know, baking of course has to be a little more fine tuned, but whatever's here. So, so it's about two tablespoons, I'd say. So this is, um, this I was so excited to find because I have other recipes that call for tomato paste and I would always buy a whole can of tomato paste and then it would get moldy. I know, so you have to throw it out. freezing it like that, never thought to just freeze it all together, which is a lot easier. I would take it and scoop it out in tablespoon size, put it on a sill pat, throw it in the freezer, uncovered just while it was freezing and as soon as it all froze up i grab them all and throw them in a plastic bag so Perfect. think about ways to make sure you're not wasting tomato paste exactly plus you don't want it sitting in that can i just worry about the chemicals and the coating and i don't know i hate stuff in the can like that here do you want to talk about this um, i'm grabbing something well you we actually use, uh, Isogenics has this bone broth, Diana, and that's what we're using in the soup. We're What's using that, Steve? I'm sorry. Flavor bone broth. So this whole thing will actually be a, oh, it'll no, be a vegan. No, no. Oh, no, no I'm sorry. You. We're using one of each. It won't be vegan, but, but um, it's called. Well, that's what I was going to tell you guys is that I have, um, I took the turkey and made all this broth, so I'm not going to make mine vegan, but this is, um, homemade broth from the turkey that I just, it's, it's the best broth in the world. So I've got this that I'm going to use. This is so fun because you see multiple ways to be able to do the same recipe. So the thing I like about this, because we do not have homemade bone broth right now, is the fact that this just stays in your cabinet until you want to add water and use it. So. Perfect. All right, I got the broth in. Okay, you're ahead of me. So the one thing that I wanted to mention about your any kind of dried fruit of any kind, you always want to make sure, of course, always try to buy organic. So these are organic dried cranberries. You pay for what you get. So yes, they were more um, costly than the other dried cranberry, cra dried cranberries, but there is no, there are no sulfites in this at all, no sulfur dioxide. There is cane sugar, so there I could not find organic dried. It's hard to find them without sugar. It's hard. It's hard yeah. to find them. And like right now, I looked and I thought I had cranberries and I didn't. So I just have some raisins. So I'm going to use raisins instead of cranberries. It's just to add that sweet and to have them kind of plump up. You know, I don't think it's crucial that it's one or the other. But to your point, I also have some dried apricots. So I was thinking of even just slicing some dried apricots in there like it doesn't matter it's for that little bit of sweet and the antioxidant in the cranberries or whatever you know the, the, the you guys i am not kidding these recipes are so good and there's so many different ways to keep it fresh all week because like in the soup the recipe calls for um basil or pesto exactly you can like change it up every night. One night you can use thyme, one night you can use rath, um, rosemary, one night you can use pesto, one night you can use just basil and it gives it a different flavor. Exactly, I love that. And you know, we're gonna use almonds. You could also use macadamia nuts. You could use, you know, what other, whatever other nut that you, you liked in terms of mixing that with, you know, I don't like, you know, I don't like oily nuts so much. Look, I wouldn't choose to use cashews. Pine nuts, so-so. I'd much rather use a, a nut that doesn't have as much oil. So I had just 
in the cabinet, pine nuts and raw pumpkin seeds. I thought oh, the yum. pumpkin seeds with the cranberry would be a fun fall combo. I think that would. Um, but just, again, you can use what you have. Steve's got the food cam going. So you guys can take a peek. Oh my gosh, that is so cool. Is that like, are you wearing it on your head? Uh, no, he's just holy. Oh my gosh, it looks like he's got it. We should get him a headlamp so we can <laughs> have a head camera. Get a little GoPro. Head, head. Exactly. That's gorgeous. Yeah. I, so this looks I'm good. Doing so. Uh, when, when we're done with it, we'll use the hand mixer and it'll be smooth. Oh, so one thing that as you, if you guys have been tuning in, you've heard that we had a huge estate sale. We sold so much of our, we sold everything on the inside and outside of our house. So one of the things that we got rid of was our immersion blender, our hand blender. And when I saw both of these recipes, the salad dressing and the soup, you I had said, to do it. We need to go buy an immersion blender. <laughs> They're the best because transferring, I've tried it before to transfer to the blender and I've burnt myself where you spill it. Yeah. And it's a pain Our, to clean it. Not Our good. The exact same thing. We've had issues with trying to blend hot soups and stuff. It's it's kind of a mess. It's dangerous. I mean, we don't want yeah. people burning themselves. I'm going to bring Teddy on. She's going to say hi. Nice. We got that, Teddy. Sorry. <laughs> I got to get that. <laughs> I'm excited. But I've been sitting here the whole time waiting for I know. Her. I just brought you in. So how's it going? Um, it's going well. I'm working on homework, getting ready for Monday, watching the live. All right. Obviously. Have you no. been watching Dr. Bittner cook? I have, yes. It's very impressive. All your tips. I love it. Oh, thank you. How impressive is it that she's had such a, a successful career and raised three kids, and has stayed in unbelievable shape, and is now launching her dream. It's right. So I'm good. very blessed. I'm very blessed. It's, it wouldn't trade it. So Teddy actually had a question for you, Dr. Bittner. You What's that, Teddy? <laughs> I hope you can hear me. I don't know if my wife likes what's happening with it, but I was wondering if you took patients that were like not around my mom's age, that were more of like my age. Yeah, we I do. I, I just, we're kind of, it, it's fun because when we first launched True, we did a lot of um, Zoom meetings with, you know, women who I thought would mainly be focused on our business, you know, with uh, the 45 to 60 age group. And a lot of these women said, well, what about my daughter? I want her to have the same care yeah. that I know you're going to give me in terms of that hour long appointment and really addressing all the issues. And, and we thought, why not? So we started the empower program and it's been oh, so fun. So it's a one time, you know, appointment, you know, with follow up as needed. We don't part participate with insurance in a regular way. So it's a one time, you know, cash 225 and it's just, mm -hmm. you can turn it into your insurance and all that good stuff. But it's been so fun because these young women come, Teddy, probably your age and older and younger. And um, sometimes they come because their mom made them. I'll say, did you come because you wanted to come or your mom made you? And they'll say, my mom made me. And by the end of the hour, they're like, this was so fun. I can't wait yeah. to come back and see you again. Oh my gosh. Yeah. That's so cool. It's really cool. So we do family planning. Of course, we talk about that. We'll put in an IUD at the office if, if that's what someone would want. But we talk yeah. about sexual health. We talk about you know, what vitamins to take, you know, choices to start making in that younger, those, those younger years, and you know, yeah. to really set you up for success. Um, we hired a therapist recently, and I think, you know, several gals are going to see her in terms of stress management and how to deal. I mean, the world you guys are coming into right now is just crazy, right. right? So a lot of the girls are having issues with sleeping and just mm -hmm. dealing with the stress. And so we're so excited to have hired Ashley and, um, She's already filling up quickly, and people are really excited to see Ashley and and get some coping techniques. So, sorry, Teddy, I got rambly, but but no, that's the long answer. I love it. That's awesome. Yeah. That's good to know. I'll be in, definitely when I'm in Grand Rapids so. yeah. <laughs> at cool. some point. I'd love awesome. it. And now the word's really spreading, like uh, in the high school. We're getting a lot of word of mouth, and um, girls are oh, telling yeah. their friends, "You've got to." You got to see Dr. Bittner and Suzanne at, at True Women's Health. So it's been great. We just love what we do. That's a question. That's awesome. 
That is so cool. It, it's and especially Alan, cool when people say I, when people say like I can't believe that I I want to come back to the gynecologist. Like whoever would have thought that. No, right. <laughs> no, everybody's scared of it. That's awesome. Kathy Lewis is asking what I'm drinking. I'm drinking a Bia. How do you say this, Margot? Bia. It's Bia, yeah. Yeah, I just love this. This is a mango mimosa one. So it's got a little bit of caffeine and um, it tastes good and it's got sweet potato and all those good extracts. It has multiple mushrooms too for your immune system. And I don't know if you know what it stands for. It stands for botanical energy plus adaptogens. That's what BS stands for. Mm, I like that, but I really do like them because the last thing I need right now is a full cup of coffee and I've totally broken from the diet Coke that I used to love. So Good. I am all about Bia. <laughs> so oh, much God. better for you when you see I know, My son told me that I wasn't allowed to drink diet Coke anymore about five years ago. And if I ever wanted one, I had to sneak one. So now I don't even do that. <laughs> Good for him. Good for him. Yeah. It's no bad. You know. So oh, wait, did Owen say that? Yeah, he like, I don't know, like five years ago told me I wasn't allowed to have Diet Coke anymore. Your kids are yep. your greatest teachers. I bet Teddy has taught you some things. She looks I very heard. wise. Yes, oh, she does. Yeah. <laughs> so we talked about this in another episode, but in our house growing up, Teddy's job as I'm peeling the garlic and throwing it in, Teddy's job in our kitchen was to every week, um, peel a head of garlic and put it in a little jar for me. So that was one less thing that I had to do when I made food. Very smart. Did your kids help you in the kitchen? Um, yes, especially Pixie. She actually has an Instagram page called Pix in the Kitchen, And it is oh. awesome. And I am so proud of her because, heck, if my kids are even better cooks than me, that would be awesome. And um, so she's really got a lot of great Yes. Yeah, so Pixie, it's really fun. And then uh, my older daughter, Megan, um, has the knack as well. She doesn't cook a lot right now, but when she does, she goes crazy. She's really into like borscht and like she loves Russian food. So I don't get that, but <laughs> they're into it. My son, Owen, he, yeah, he's getting there. Not so much yet. He will. It was such a big deal when our kids went off to school because they all had Kind of the basic level of cooking, and they never had trouble whatsoever. Good As for you. Of fact, they, they saw some of their friends who couldn't cook the most basic thing, and they were thanking us finally. For they, yeah, us. they finally thanked us for something. So, moms, if you're watching, it's delayed gratification. Keep keep teaching them what you know is right. Yep. Well, I'm gonna I'm Just gonna go ahead and. Time. Time. This is Margot's the almonds, the sliced almonds. I'm gonna toast those really on the. Close. I'm gonna toast those on the oven or the stove. Um, and the trick with any kind of toasting of nuts is constant movement because they burn so fast. I know they go from zero to sixty in like two seconds. Okay, so I'm gonna do the same. Yeah, you Did you put a little olive oil in your Steve? I, no, I don't, because I have a nonstick pan, so I just I just do it right in the pan, and it toasts them okay. perfectly. Perfect. But I love roasting a nut. It brings out the flavor, and not only does it smell good, but it makes such a difference to me in the flavor. It does. That toasty flavor is really good. Yeah, it just brings, brings out their flavor. It's the best. So this is a handheld blender, an immersion blender. Um, you use it. We're gonna use it for the soup, and we're. I'm using it right now for the uh, dressing for the kale and quinoa salad. A couple of the things that I did while we were chit chatting was we bought a really good extra virgin olive oil. I used the rest of that, and then I put in kind of the utilitarian extra virgin olive oil. It's still a good one, not as high quality as this, but so I kind of mixed the two together. I love the fact that Dr. Bittner said she's an ish cook. I am too. Cooking is an art. Baking is a science. We learned that last week with the biscuits. Biscuits. 100%. Uh, but so the other thing that I added was the Dijon mustard, some maple syrup, and I ished that, just eyeballed it, some sea salt. 
I'm just rinsing my northern beans. Uh oh. We might have lost them. Uh oh, where they go? Hey. I, don't I know. guess Teddy, it's you and me. No problem. I noticed you have true on your apron. That's really cool. You like my true apron? Merch, true merch. I love merch. it. That's right. We do have merch as well. We're getting our t-shirts ready to go. But we did a um, cooking show on, I think it was last week sometime with Anna, our nutrition coach. We made some healthy recipes for Thanksgiving. So we had our okay. aprons out for the first time. But yes, oh, we're very cool. proud of our, our true aprons. So that's no, cool. Um, yes. I don't have this question, but I don't know if you can talk about it. Let me know if you What's can. That? You're writing a book. Is that something you can talk about? Oh, sure. Well, the, oh, the cookbook. Well, the cookbook's still in very early phase, but um, okay. the, the book for True has been out for a while now. It's um, called I Want to Age Like That. And it comes, there's a book and then the, there's a workbook. So the, the book talks about, um, so back in 2008, I, I, wanted to bring all this information into the clinical setting and, and have a method to do that. And so I did a pilot study with 100 women and the book is about the stories of the women who went through the pilot study and how, you know, by incorporating seven essential elements of daily success, their seeds, they all felt better. And we were able to really help women be, feel supported through the midlife transition. So the book is all about that. And at True, we follow the workbook for patients' visits to really help them understand their total wellness. Yeah, and then they have something to take away. Is that is that what it is? Don't you think that, yeah, that's a big part of it because they leave with a plan. It's not just about, you know, hey, you're having hot flashes, here's a prescription we'll yeah. give you in a year. It's a really okay. regular plan of lifestyle and medical options so women can feel their best. It's just so okay. much fun. I see your uh, mom and dad are saying, we'll, work. we'll be back. <laughs> They'll be back. Okay, Hopefully they'll be back. What's your favorite thing to cook? My favorite thing to cook? I love pasta. I'm a sucker for pasta. I mean, it's the easiest thing, but yep. it's, it's good. I love it. I, I should cook something more, like, intricate. But so what college, kind of pasta do you like? Do you use white flour pasta or brown rice, or what kind of pasta do you use? I, it's probably white flour, but I'm a little weird when it comes to the noodles. I don't like linguine. So anything in whatever shape. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> I like the fun, the fun aspect. I would love you to try though brown rice pasta. I mean, have you tried it? I probably should. Oh, there's that. brown rice pasta has Can like. You guys hear me? Such, yep. Brown rice pasta has such we're good texture. To, we're trying to get back on. We don't know what happened. <laughs> so I feel like it, brown rice pasta has a little bit. It's a little bit more healthier. In yeah, my head. it is because you know what? I recently had a patient. She's really thin. Um, she talked like, about hot flashes and night sweats. I okay. mean, and she's like 22. And I said, it's not that you're in menopause, you're 22. But for her, she really saw that it was related to eating the simple carbs. So she would make like white flour pasta and the sugar yeah. by high and then the sugar low would give her hot flash. I mean, she didn't feel good. So now that she's eating brown rice pasta, she's yeah. feeling so much better and less anxious and it's really been a good thing. So those complex carbs are everything. Yeah, I never thought about that. Oh. Hey, you guys. You guys are back. Hey, can you hear us? Yes. Okay, uh, we have no idea what happened to our computer. We roll with that. Steve is, Steve is trying to get that fixed. We have to use the food can. Okay. No so, Teddy, what are you putting your... So Steve's gonna work on that. that. I think I missed that. Was, am I upside down? Oh, there. So Margo, what other vegetables are you guys gonna make for tonight? So we are just, um, we're gonna have the kale and quinoa, the tomatoes. Steve's going to cook up a, a couple of pieces of salmon. We don't like, Yum. we don't like, um, meal prepping our salmon and like reheating it. So we'll do that in the moment. Good. Um, we'll reheat chicken breasts, but, um, and that's it. And then we're cutting up some fresh veggies to just eat uh, throughout the week or throughout the next couple of days, which are heirloom carrots, uh, some green beans, and then some celery. Nice. So you guys, I'm so sorry about that. I don't know what happened. 
we um, are just spinning on our computer screen. Am I getting feedback, Teddy? Yeah, a, like a little, not, not horrible, not too bad. And so anyway, in the meantime, I was able to whip up the salad dressing and we were able to burn the uh, almonds. <laughs> <laughs> It's just rolling with it. I'm about to do Don't that. take your eye off nuts. You the, can't. Uh, over the rain. Margo, did you see, did you notice that I was, in the recipe I talked about um, kale. Recently I've been really reading a lot of Dr. Andrew Weil stuff about, um, you know, his cookbook is called True Food. It's such an awesome cookbook. And he talks about black kale versus the regular curly stuff. And so I've gotten into this black kale and I just love it. It's darker green. It's longer. And so I just take the stem off. And I just like the flavor better. And, you know, when anything has a dark, robust color, you think about all the antioxidants and minerals and vitamins in there. So. Sorry about this. Um, I was wondering where you get the black kale. Because I, I saw that and I looked for it and, and couldn't find it. I just um, saw it at our the grocery store down the street from me. Four Till Foods actually had it, so I was really happy about that. You know what? I think your AirPods are running out. Is that an AirPod, Teddy? Do you think? Oh, Teddy's gone. There's a lot of static. I'm wondering if your AirPods are running out of juice. Mine? I I think they may be. You may have to switch over to the computer sound. Okay. Cool. There's a lot of static. So okay, I'm just sorry washing about off the uh, immersion blender. This dressing is really thick when you make it. And then when you refriger refrigerate it, it um, gets a little bit thinner, which was surprising to me. I don't know why that happened. That's got to be some, some science in there that I don't quite understand. But when you first make it, oh, it is so thick and delicious. Um, Margo, can you hear me okay? Do you know where that is? We used yeah. it. We filled it with dressing. We used all the dressing. And now I can't find the squeeze bottle. So, Margo, I'm doing another variation in the salad. I love bok choy. I love bok choy. So I'm adding to the celery with some bok choy. I just love the flavor of raw bok choy. So I'm cutting it up and putting it in my salad. That sounds delicious. And we, I'm being told that we are having feedback. I'm having feedback on my end. Yeah, I think. So static is on your end, mom. Static on your end. So should I just put my air, should I put your AirPods on or something that's connected to your computer? So, or can we share AirPods? So Margo, how do people get these recipes? So it's, um, Steve can change the ticker. They can go to www.dfam.life. When you do that, you'll, um, you put in your email address, you will immediately get these recipes in your inbox. Um, it's all set up to happen automatically. Nice. Or you can text family to a phone number that is not on the top of my head right now. Steve can put it up on the ticker in a minute. Okay, because I think these recipes are awesome. And how did you cut your kale? I love having the kitchen shears. Oh, yeah. And cutting my kale that way. So it's nice and rough cut. Um, we've got a kale, uh, kale tip also. Um, you can text family to 616-344-4401. Text family to that number. It's going across the bottom of the screen. I want to thank all the live viewers that are watching. So sorry about the technical difficulties tonight. We cannot get this broadcast to come back on through our computer. So we had to go to the food cam. But you know what, Margo? I love how you're creative and you just roll with it. 
goodness for the food can. You just roll with it. <laughs> you just roll with it. That's life, isn't it? And just, you know, cooking is the same way. And if you have all this stuff ready to go, you don't have to worry about when you come home tired after a long day or if you've been working at home all day and the last thing you feel like doing is, you know, thinking about what's for dinner. It's like you're just, you learn to roll with it. And this is what this is all about, how we can help each other support our healthy lifestyle, right? Yeah, if you get caught up in perfection, you're never going to make it happen. So I just decanted, uh, you don't have the full view here, but I just put the uh, salad dressing in this great squeezer bottle. Um, Steve is, we'll bring the food cam over to what Steve is doing. I am making rough soup into smooth soup. Oh, it's blending the two? Oh, yep. Basil, Margo. I'm going to put that some in my soup. Oh, yum. Are you growing that? Yeah, it's just right in my kitchen. So I just grow it and then I just am able to throw some in the soup. So we're ready to go. And then, of course, I'll put some more fresh on the top when I'm done with it. I've got my immersion blender ready to go as well. I think mine's a little quieter than that one. You know what? I'm gonna mute so you you can talk. Oh, are you done? Oh. Okay, Steve's done with the immersion blender. Now you're starting. Oh, I think she did mute. <laughs> yeah, Dr. Bittner muted because the immersion blender is loud. Yeah. I'm here, do you hear me? Yeah, you muted because the immersion blender is loud. We should have done the same thing, right? Oh, okay. I just love thinking about in the tomato soup using the immersion blender, all the healthy you know, antioxidants and vitamins are in the skin. And by having all of that right, you know, with a roasted tomato, it helps caramelize the sugars in the tomato. And being able to have the skins nice and soft and still including them in the soup, it's so healthy. Okay, well, we at least fixed the view a little bit. There we go. All right, if you're just joining us, we are making a kale and quinoa salad. We are making tomato soup, and we've had every technical difficulty that you can imagine, but we are moving and shaking because we have to get this done in an hour. Just finished the dressing for the kale and quinoa salad. We went over some variations earlier, so if you are just uh, tuning in, you can go back and hear some of the variations that you can use to keep things fresh all week. Dr. Bittner is using her immersion blender to blend up the kale or to blend up the classic tomato soup right now. Correct. Put the basil back. And I think my quinoa is almost done. <laughs> We have the That's a quinoa. It's a quinoa, millet, um, and buckwheat. So it's a blend all together. Oh, nice. That, that puts some, so it takes a little longer to cook. It's got all these great complex carbs, really go, good source of fiber. It helps us fill up, even though we don't have as many, um, you know, just in one simple dish, we can get full, and it's really healthy protein as well in the quinoa. Diana, we have um, 
someone that is recommending your book to everyone. You might want to check the screen. Thank you so much, Kathy. I um, never set out to write a book, but I was just so honored by learning from women over the last 25 years of, you know, you know, what do women really care about? And I think the first thing is really having some guidance around forming a goal that's possible. Like people read the book and they're like, before this, I never really understood my choices and how they affect the consequences of, of aging, you know? And uh, my daughter actually helped me come up with the name of the book. I want to age like that. Because we all have a different that, right? Like my that's different than Margot's that. And so it's how we can each have our own goal and use that as our vision. You know, one thing people will ask me is how do I stay motivated to exercise or eat well? And I would argue that motivation is kind of that extra thing that you're lucky if you have it. Many days I might not feel like exercising, but it's that vision. It's 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 knowing that I want to age like that. And and the short term perk of getting off the bike and feeling powerful and strong, but when I'm 55, I don't want to, you know, have diabetes. I don't want to have low energy. I want to be sleeping well. I want to be feeling well. So I have that really clear vision. And I'd like to think that the book really shows how important that is to have that vision of your goal in the future. We call it the picture of self. So thank you so much. And um, we, we just all keep working to support each other. And I love how Steve is right here cooking, you know, and, and, and you guys are awesome how you work together. I'm very impressed. My soup's coming together. What about yours? Can you say that again? I said my soup's coming together. How is yours? Our soup is done. We can show you the food camp. Soup is done. And that's beautiful. What we got on top of it? Some basil? That's basil chopped on top. We okay. have our almonds right here that are toasted. Are we had to redo these because the first batch was a result of uh, us trying to fix our technical. Like the burnt almonds. And then this is the crumbly goat cheese. So you yeah. can buy goat cheese um, in a package. I don't recommend that. Get the crumbled. It'll work a lot better on your salad. I know. Because then... I ran out of crumbled. I just had the package. So I'm just going to have to smear a little in there. See what happens. Make it work. Make it work. Now I am cutting up the celery. So we can just keep that on hand to throw in the salad. So I'm putting my hot kale, my hot quinoa on the kale, and um, oh, I forgot to make the dressing. Okay, here we go. Steve, can you use the food pan and show people the quinoa? The, the dressing is one fourth cup of olive oil. So here is what this quinoa looks like. Hope you can see it. Yeah, it's looking good. And you've got your berries already in it, right? Really good, yeah. I'm gonna put it in a bowl so we can take a look at that. So I love this vinaigrette, it's so light. So it's olive oil, I've got my lemon and my little juicer. How much lemon? Two tablespoons of lemon juice. So usually if I get some lemons, I'll like sort of juice a couple and then put them in a little jar in the fridge. So just to use it for a couple of days, but, or just to do it fresh at the time, it certainly smells so good. I'm trying to mute while I cut because we were having such audio issues, but I want to thank all of our live viewers for hanging, hanging in there with us. I wonder how many people out there, how many are you making this uh, recipe yourself right now? Or... I would love to know if you're watching live, are you making the recipe? Or are you just watching and then going to make it later? I'm going to mute again. Hold on one second while I check. Okay, so I mix my olive oil, my lemon juice with my, I love to do things by hand when I can. I just love, I don't know, feeling the texture and feeling it in my hand and, 
So what do we have here? We need some mustard and maple syrup. Hard. This is backwards. Uh, he's getting the salmon fillets prepared. Did you want to talk about this pan that you use? I don't know that much about it. Someone told me to buy it. It's a Copper Chef, and it's like a nonstick pan, but it's like you can you can scratch it with metal stuff. It's awesome. So that's how I cook my uh, salmon. I just oh wow! Because you probably don't right need to, or, any we, don't, or, we don't have a grill, so and it turns out so good. Oh, I love that. Where did you find the copper pan? So we have in the email. I use macadamia oil. In the oh, email wow. that went out, we have a link to it on Amazon. We found it on Amazon. Oh, I definitely will be looking. To get that, I do have a fish stone, so I tend to bake a lot of fish in the fish stone. Okay. Okay, dressing. So it is so nice to have kale cleaned, prepped, and ready to go. So there is, um, I love the nutritional information that you gave us about the black kale. I will definitely be shopping at Forest Hills Foods more because I found out that my favorite produce manager now works there. And I wanted to actually introduce you guys. His name's David, David Heater. I would love that. If you can't find what you're looking for, he will get it for you. He does the best. I moved here from Grand Haven about six months ago. I knew the D&W and all the people who work there so well, and they would get me anything. So I'd love to have you people here a little quicker than just running my way around. So I'd love you to introduce us. Thank you. Yes, I know you're going to be doing a lot of cooking at True and, and doing some. You already did a great live last week. Is that on the True Women's Health public page or the Two Women's Health private Facebook page? That was our private Facebook page. So it was myself and Anna. We had some really great um, Recipes, healthy Thanksgiving type recipes. So we did a cranberry, um, and then we did what did we do? Oh, we did a pumpkin hummus that was just fantastic. So we just love, you know, we we started a private Facebook group for our patients at True and Health, and we're loving to see how women are supporting each other and sharing their own ideas for cooking and dealing with stress and um this last month we had a gratitude challenge and people were really posting what they're thankful for and supporting each other and and how to incorporate gratitude in our everyday life so that that private page has really been more than i thought it would be it's just been lovely and in december we're doing two more um cooking events on our private facebook page So I am almost done washing the kale, and I just want to show you a quick tip. 
on how to de stem this kale easily. Uh, this is curly, more of a cur curly variety of kale, so you can do it one way. But if you're doing a more, more flat leaf variety, like you had earlier, the black kale, yeah, it's the other, it's the other way. So I'll do both ways real quick. And we are almost going to wrap. We just have some veggies to cut. There's my platform. Can you see? Oh. Beautiful. Wow. Gorgeous. Doesn't an hour go by so fast that we get so much done? How is it an hour already? I have no idea. It's yep. like seven o'clock. Yes. So for curly kale, you want to start at the top. I'm going to use a bigger piece. Start at the top of the kale and pinch it so you get the stem. And then you you pull so many times we want to pull the other way and from the bottom up. You start at the top and you peel down, holding the kale the way it naturally wants to go. And that's how you de stem curly kale. Now, if it was more of a flat leaf um, kale, I'll just demonstrate on this. You, it's really hard to because you can't find. If it's more of a flat, flat leaf, you start at the bottom, you do two tears on either side. And then you can just go right up the stem and that these stems flatly scale. And then what I wanted to show you was how you store it. And the best way, and actually I think I learned this tip originally from Dave because he is a produce master. He is, I mean, he has been a produce manager for probably 30 years. And so who better to ask how to store any type of greens and especially kale in a plastic bag with a damp paper towel with it. And that's the best way to store greens or kale. And so we have ours, like this is two servings in each bag. That's why the picture of everything has a piece of, has a plastic bag and a, and a, a paper towel. Very clever. Good job. Well, I'm already eating my salad out of the bowl. It's so good. So good. So that's it. We just have some veggies to get cut up and put in the refrigerator and get the kale into some bags. We have two bags already done. Awesome. So we have our quinoa. Can you see it? So good. Our soups. Do you want to show everything? And then we're going to call it a wrap. Mm. That is beautiful. Ta -da. And now hopefully you can sit and enjoy the, the fruits of your labor. We get to have a lovely dinner tonight and for the rest of the week. <laughs> Very good. So nice. So is there anything you wanted to add before we sign off? I just think, again, this is so great that we can all support each other in these healthy habits and make it fun and delicious. And uh, it's not a hard to eat well. It's uh, really a joy. And it, just, it doesn't take that long to add that little bit of joy to life and have it be good for us. So thank you for doing this, Margo. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Thank you for your patience with this crackle and okay. <laughs> using the food cam is our main cam. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Thank you for these unbelievable recipes. I have this for Thanksgiving. <laughs> so good. It's worth it. Good. All right, guys. Thank you. All right. Thanks so much. Thanks, Diana. See you, everyone. Good night. Thanks, Steve. See you again.